Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Monday afternoon here in Australia, market has bounced back quite nice, 5.6%, but it's still under $2 trillion, so I am still concerned ladies and gentlemen. It's been a good bounce back, but it's just, uh, we don't know where it is yet. We're still waiting for, you know, the markets to kind of open up Monday morning stateside time and see what happens. But, you know, under $2 trillion has me concerned. Doesn't mean, again, I'm selling everything. I'm not selling anything at the moment. I'm still buying. But I am proceeding with caution, absolutely. Look, the volume was nice. I mean, 21%, $311 billion. You know, maybe that kind of 41 ish thousand dollar level was the bottom. Uh, I mean, the volume was really good there. So that's nice. Bitcoin jumped straight back up to $44,000 but it hasn't breached the level that I'm looking for just yet. Very close, uh, and hopefully it does, and as I've shown in the charts before, and we'll have a look shortly, it's got a few levels it needs to get to before I'm gonna kinda get too carried away. Gas prices, $3.83, so just under $4. Pretty stock standard, it's been there for a while. But let's have a look. Again, it looks pretty nice considering the market's up. What's been the best performer in the top 100 in the last 24 hours? Well, there we go, PERP, DYDX, Uni. Uh, Uni and possibly DYDX, most likely a lot to do with the China bands and things like that, so they're all trying to get over to decentralized uh, DEXs because they can't be using exchanges. Uh, that's what a lot of people are saying. Same thing with Sushi. So, I mean, look, 20% gains, 30% gains, 50% gains, quite nice. Plenty of high double-digit gains. Are they... Uh, Bitcoin Cash, I mean, even Ethereum, 10%, you name it. Plenty of really good gains. And so that's really nice. What about losses, though? What hasn't performed that well? Right, well, obviously, Huobi token. Uh, people from China are uh, getting out of exchanges because that's basically the new rulings over there. Seller network down a little bit. But look, a couple of single-digit losses, and then really we're into, you know, very, very low, less than... Uh, a percent loss and then you know we go into the stable coins which are up because people are getting pretty excited on them so minimal losses some really nice gains which is good but this is where we have to have a look so we go over here have a look at the bitcoin chart we still haven't breached this and again it really is that kind of you know let's round it up to sort of 45 ish thousand dollars if we can't get through there and this rolls over, then again, I am still very worried that this is a dead cat bounce. But that hasn't happened yet. This is looking like it's good, so we breached through here. But again, really, for me to be almost have zero concern that this is a dead cat bounce, we're going to get through $52,500. But it still could be a dead cat bounce if we don't break $64,000. That really will be the ultimate test. It'd be a weird, weird dead cat bounce to kind of bounce, come over, come up here and then roll over. But just because it's weird doesn't mean that it can't happen. So that's really what I'm looking for. But as we can see down here around that kind of forty, forty-one thousand dollars $41,000 level, I mean, it just bounced hard. You know, it got down here and it just got bought up. And I mean, we can see that full candle close over here. There's not even really any wick to the bottom or the top. It was just completely solid, all getting bought up. As soon as Bitcoin gets down around that $41,000, $40,000 mark, it is snapped straight up. Lots of volume. Now we need to see, can this carry through or is this just more of this? Again, pump up, roll over, 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 pump up, roll over. And basically, pump up, roll over. It's a repeated pattern that's going on at the moment and we need to see that change. And as I told you the other day, for me, I'm putting a lot more into stable coins at the moment. I'm probably going to go somewhere between 30 to 50% of my money will go into stable coins and I'm not really touching any altcoins. I'm focusing mainly on Bitcoin until I see a real uh, trend reversal, a little bit into Ethereum. And look, if I see some alts just for whatever reason dip down to some great price that I think is all right, I might throw a few dollars at them. But I'm really just staying away from the altcoins at the moment. They do say fortune favors the brave and all that. And again, back here, I was getting into alts and I was loving it. But this is just looking scary at the moment. 
it doesn't mean it has to play out. As I've said that before, just because it's looking like a dead cat bounce doesn't mean it's going to be a dead cat bounce. But if it is going to be a dead cat bounce, I don't want to have been putting a whole lot of money into altcoins that are just going to get truly wrecked. I'd rather be in Bitcoin, which again, I know will, you know, it could lose up to 85% of its value. Possible. I don't think it's going to, but it's possible. I'm happy to just put my money into Bitcoin even when it's going down. Not so much any of the other coins. And I'll be putting a lot into stable coins until I see a true bottoming formation. Something that makes me think, yes, this is the bottom. Uh, and again, most people probably won't even be here with that. But I won't make the same mistake I did last time in 2017. And forgetting about the markets and then waiting until very late 2019, um, sort of just after the crash 2020 before I really sort of got back you know, heavily into the market. I missed out on a whole lot of gains before then. I could have made exponential gains. I've made good gains, don't get me wrong, but I could have made way more if I had a stuck with the market. So I won't be forgetting the market. I'll be closely keeping an eye on the market. But again, until this breaks this, I'm a little less worried. Breaks this, a little less worried again. Breaks this, a whole lot less worried. Again, really, $52,500, we get above there. I'm fairly confident that the dead cat bounce is not in play. But it just looks so scary at the moment. But again, that doesn't mean I'm panicking just because it looks scary. Looks can be deceiving, as that say. All right, a couple of stories I wanted to share with you. So Robinhood Crypto COO and CTO hint that DeFi features are coming. Well, this will be very, very interesting because we saw what happened to Coinbase looking to bring, you know, sort of DeFi and uh, lending, a lending sort of, it wasn't an app, but I guess you could call it a, a lending part to their business. And they got a, a letter from the SEC basically saying, you do that, we'll sue. I wonder if that's coming to Robin Hood. Uh, definite possibility. It'll be interesting to see where this goes. But in order to stay out of the SEC sites, I'm going to say it's probably going to be very low. It'll maybe be 1%, 2% or something like that. But again, maybe they're just not worried about the SEC or maybe they've got inside information that has them uh, knowing something that we don't. But it is interesting that they decided they're going to try and do this, again, considering what happened to Coinbase and even what's going on with Celsius right now in some of the states, New Jersey, Texas, Alabama, uh, and things like that. Have to keep an eye out. I don't use Robinhood uh, at all. I think there's much better places personally. Uh, but, you know, there is lots of people out there that do use Robinhood. So keep an eye out for that because any interest you can earn is a bonus because, let's face it, the banks, they really aren't paying much, if any, interest at all. Right, the big Cardano uh, meetup was yesterday or the day before yesterday, and it looks like uh, Cardano is going to have its first stable coin. And it's going to be called DJED, and that's the stable coin that will be issued on Cardano. Now, it's not actually pegged to a dollar, I don't think. I think it's going to be just a, a stable coin. I don't know exactly how they're going to peg it, but it is going to be uh, a, an algorithmic stable coin. I don't think it's going to be pegged to the US dollar exactly. So interesting for Cardano, and they are going to need something like that to get all these DeFi projects up and running. And again, they're still talking about it. It's all coming, but we just haven't seen it yet. We know that smart contracts are there. They're available, but there just hasn't been any major kind of rollouts of smart contracts just yet on Cardano that people are flocking to. It's not that they don't have them, but I don't know of a, you know really any uh, DeFi projects that have now changed over to Cardano. I'm sure that will be coming very, very soon. So something we'll have to keep an eye out. And again, makes me even more bullish for Cardano. Hence why I don't plan on selling really much Cardano at all. If we truly are going into a bear market, I may sell a little bit of Cardano to get my money back. And I've been truly lucky. I got into Cardano for just a couple of cents. So I wouldn't have to sell much to get my money back. And then I would simply be looking to buy more Cardano when it starts to get to the bottom and leave the rest of it staking. So again, there's some coins I'm just not selling. Cardano, again, I'll sell a tiny amount. Matic, Polygon, I'll sell a tiny amount, enough to get my initial uh, investment back. And again, both of those coins, I'm lucky. I can uh, do that quite easy and have plenty left staking. 
I won't be selling any Ethereum, I won't be selling any XRP, and I won't be selling any Bitcoin if we're already going into a bear market. Outside of that, a number of my other stable coins, I probably will have to kind of, you know, accept some losses on some of them. Others are still quite uh, in the green, and I'll be definitely looking to take uh, profits on those. But the kind of big caps, as I would say, I won't be selling them. And that's just me. I'll accept that I got it wrong and I missed the top uh, and didn't take enough profits and redistributed back in when it was the wrong time. Again, I had cash on the side and I deployed it all through here. You know, I've got this, so that was nice. But again, some of them are still just, some of my altcoins haven't really done too much at all. They're still sitting around about where they were, or just a tiny bit in profit. Whereas if Bitcoin rolls over and breaks below sort of 40,000, I think the profits out of them will be drained very, very quickly. But I'm not going to panic sell just now because I think that might happen. I want to see it happen and again, be a legit close, not just some wick that comes down. Again, some big crazy sort of wick like this or you know crazy wicks like this. I'm not worried about those. It's candle body closes, and I need to see a distinct pattern that will continue to go lower. Right, things heating up in the Senate as well. So the U.S. House of Reps to deliver verdict on infrastructure bill this week. Now, we still have time to see if they will put an amended one forwards, and we have people coming out to help us. Help us. So U.S. Senator slams SEC Chair Gary Gensler for regulation by enforcement approach to cryptocurrencies. And I agree, we need new laws. We need a, you know, forget the SEC. They're not securities, uh, a lot of people say. They're something else, a commodity or whatever. Let's, or not let's, but I think the U.S., if they want to stay at the forefront of finance and things like that, they need to make a new agency that has you know, people who truly understand crypto to come forward and regulate it, not try and, again, I say this, I've said this a number of times, not try and fit this new technology into old rules that it just plain and simply doesn't fit. So Senator Pat Toomey, he's one of the ones that wanted to put through uh, an amended version of Pennsylvania, says that investors in the new space need clear rules and guidance rather than harsh enforcement and fines. I agree. For investors to benefit from a fair and competitive marketplace, regulators must proactively provide rules of the road to industry. Unfortunately, the Securities and Exchange Commission has instead adopted a strategy of regulation by enforcement. Yes, again, they're you know, trying to make this fit into an old system. The old system was broken, except for those who are at the top which is, you know, politicians and things like that. That's why they don't want it to change. The rest of us, it didn't really work for us at all. Again, you know, they put up this mantra that, oh, we won't let you get in in early investing stuff. You know, you've got to have a million, a minimum of two million and, you know, all this stuff for you to invest in, you know, early projects because if they fail, we don't want the average investor to get wrecked. We also don't want the average investor to get rich because that's where the big money's made. We need one set of rules that simply applies for everyone. Yes, it'll be unfortunate for people who you know, don't invest properly and lose money, but that's just life. You learn your best lessons from mistakes you make, and hopefully you don't make mistakes that are so big that it affects you for the rest of your life. But if it does, then you probably shouldn't have been in control of your money in the first place, and you should have said, let someone else uh, deal with that kind of stuff. All right, now we go over to here, South Africa. We know they're really, really big on cryptocurrencies. And now we've got some of their smartest minds coming out. South African University professor urges country to finalize cryptocurrency policy, and he warns against restricting cryptocurrency. See, it's these smaller nations that will really see, you know, the transformation of their countries it will help their people get away from the broken currencies that they have the broken governments uh, that they have now it doesn't solve all the problems but you know whatever money they have now if they can put just a little bit away into cryptocurrency in 10 years time possibly could really be life-changing for them that probably won't happen for the everyday joe in you know developed countries you put a couple of dollars away uh yeah it'll turn into a little bit more but probably not life-changing you need to put a lot more to turn it into life-changing money for the developed world it's the underdeveloped nations that will really profit from it so this is our uh, professor Ribalani. 
Degada, hopefully I say that right. So Degada warned South African authorities that the continued efforts to stifle cryptocurrencies will not achieve the intended results. And I think all politicians all around the world need to take heed of this. He adds that regulators must learn from history that violently opposing an emerging innovation will not kill it. I completely agree. The only thing that's stopping cryptocurrency is you take the internet down. The world will fall apart if you take the internet down. You can do all these other things that you want, but this is a train that has already left the station and you just can't bring it back. So get on the front foot, get out ahead of it, not try to stop it and bring it back to the station. That is what's really going to just mess so many things up in general. And yes, I am a little bit one-sided when I say that because I am a big fan of cryptocurrencies. All right, we spoke about Rich Dad Poor Dad the other day, author Robert Kiyosaki. He's gone big onto Ethereum and he's in telling people to invest, but he's also made another prediction. He says he expects a giant market crash in October and says that Bitcoin may crash too. So this is something that's going to be concerning. Now for me, what am I doing? Nothing. If it crashes, I just continue to buy the dip. I don't want to panic sell now and then find out that he was wrong and I was wrong and it pumps up a whole stack. I'm happy to just leave my money in Bitcoin. I don't feel the urge to sell out. I will consider, and I've said this a number of times, I'll consider taking some profits at around about 100,000. Thereabouts, I will probably take some profits. But it's not guaranteed. I'm happy to ride Bitcoin's cycles out from here. I was, again, lucky enough, smart enough, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to say smart enough, to be able to buy it at $8,000. Now, I've continued to buy it since, but I just don't think Bitcoin's going to go back down to $8,000 ever again, except for, again, some mad black swan event that, again, maybe it could be this crash in October. Who knows? But when it does recover, it will fire back twice as hard, just like it did after the everything crash last March 2020. Well, March 2020, not the last March, because that was this year, but March 2020. Cryptocurrencies fire back harder than anything else and they will do exactly the same. The fundamentals of why cryptocurrencies are here and what they're about have not changed. So market ups, market downs haven't changed the fundamentals and that is why I'm investing because I believe in those fundamentals. Not so much because I think I can time the market better than anyone else and get in and get out at the right time. I think crypto is gonna change the future and so I'm putting my money where my mouth is. Now again, everything I tell you is just personal opinion. It's never anything more. Most certainly not financial advice. You need to do what's right by you. And yes, that will mean you're going to have to do some research. You know, you can take a thousand opinions, but then you're going to have to make your mind up about all that information because you're unlikely to get a thousand opinions that are all exactly the same. You're probably going to have a nearly 50-50 split. 50% of people will tell you, yep, great. 50% of people will tell you, not bad you're going to have to work through that to decide what you want to do. And then again, have risk uh, mitigation and things like that. You know, have a look at the charts. Understand that we're probably near the higher end of it at the moment, but there's no guarantees. So don't just dump all your money in now. Scale in. So then when it goes up, yeah, you make some good profits. But when it goes down, you're still sort of scaling in. You didn't just dump it all in. And again, trying to beat the market. That's the whole trader thing. If you're a great trader, congratulations. If you're not, investing so much easier. But again, don't just dump all your cash in right now because what happens if it doesn't go up and we are in a bear market, we are in a dead cat bounce and it goes so much lower. Again, we're at 44 ish thousand dollars. What would you do if Bitcoin went down to 12 or $15,000 but you dumped all your money in at 40 thinking it was going up? You'd be kicking yourself. Scale in. That is the best and smartest way to do it. And again, I'm not offering you financial advice. I'm just telling you what I would do. Don't get me wrong. If there was some real big crazy dump, and again, Bitcoin went from 40-something, you know, down to, let's say, 20-ish something, even, you know, 29, 28,000, would I then consider going really heavy into Bitcoin and that? Absolutely. But would I throw it all in? No, I wouldn't. I would continue to have cash on the side 
just in case it's still going lower. That's the whole point. You now need to learn how to play the game and be a smart investor, not just, I'm just gonna throw it in now and just cross my fingers and toes and pray that it's going up. It may work, but if it doesn't, that's when you're really gonna get burnt. And if it does start to go up, it's not gonna matter if you scale in your money on the way up, because uh, it'll continue to go up, and then you just keep buying even when it goes down. That's the easiest way. There are more efficient ways, but you gotta start off with the easy stuff, learn it all first, before you kinda of get too crazy uh, and try to then, again, outplay the market. It, it takes a while, and most people can't outplay the market, but what they can do is maybe just slightly stay ahead of it. And some people might say, well, that's outplaying the market. No, it's not, because all, there's all these crazy moves that happen in between, and most people can't see them coming. But what they can is over time, if they're smart, just out, just you know, stay a little bit ahead of the game. They're never going to be always ahead of the game. Very few people see uh, booms coming. Very few people see crashes coming. They just have a gut feeling, but they don't know exactly when it's coming. They don't go, all right, tomorrow it's going to boom. So there's all my money, and tomorrow it's going to dump. So I'm taking all my money out. Nobody does that. It's a guessing game for everybody. All right, last but not least, we brought this story the other day where XRP said they would not settle with the SEC. Well, now look what we have. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse says he's open to settling a landmark XRP case with the SEC. So very different. This was only probably a week ago that XRP, you know, Ripple came out and said they'll never settle. They're not interested in settling. And now you know, Brad Garlinghouse and say, is saying he is. But... This is very interesting. To the extent that we can find a constructive path forward with the SEC, we, of course, want to find that. There's no scenario, though, that we're going to settle unless there's absolute certainty about what XRP is on a go-forward basis. So it's the, I love that. Like, if you've got to settle, cool, then you settle. It is, it is what it is. No point in fighting a battle where sort of no one's going to win and it can just drag on for a really long time. I'm sure the SEC want this over and done with, and so does XRP. But not if they don't have absolute clarification and certainty about what XRP is. Because you don't want to settle now, and then again, the laws change in the future, and there's all these other issues that now have to go on. You want it done, dusted, so there's no questions to be asked. Hopefully... That's what we can get. Hopefully, you know, this bill can get sorted. And again, maybe some good amendments. We've still got time. You know, Senator Pat Toomey uh, and Lummis and all the rest of it, who are Loomis, depending on how you say it. Hopefully, they still have time to get in there and put forward a better bill and get that passed. But time will tell. We'll have to wait and see. All right, that's it from me. Waiting for the markets to open up over stateside time and see if this truly is a new upwards uh, trending market, or if this is just gonna roll over and maybe we go lower. <sighs> Interesting times. All right, stay safe, be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on the gain train other than in the last you know, two days, but I'll see you next time. <laughs>